2,500 years ago, the human population was 150 million. 250 years ago, it was 1 billion. Right now, it's 7.7 .7 billion. It has grown by 8 times in the last 250 years and more than 50 times in the last 2,500 years. Can our existing democratic systems manage such explosive population growth? Let's go back in time to the 5th century BC in the city-state of Athens and let's picture this. Solon and Clisthenes, the, the fathers of democracy, transformed the political organization of Athens. All citizens were allowed to vote and with a population of 30,000 citizens, they would organize themselves to regular assemblies of at least 6,000 citizens. They would gather together in order to discuss, debate and decide about proposed laws, foreign policy and other matters. And although that early democracy was far from perfect, what history shows us is that the idea of democracy has been around for a long time. Looking at what we achieved as a species, one would assume that we have progressed significantly in all aspects of life. But what about democracy? Have we really progressed there? I would say that we haven't. We haven't progressed as a democratic society. I would say that we've regressed and that we're charting to dangerous territories. We may be heading to a future where our democratic systems are distorted and may be damaged beyond repair. We have created a globalized world. We have achieved astonishing, astonishing technological advances. We have secured a universal set of fundamental human rights. The world economy is growing in less than a generation and the value of the yearly global economic production has doubled. Increasing productivity around the world means that we have less poverty than ever before. Poverty rates have been decreasing steadily in the last 30 years. We have better education. We have seen a massive increase in literacy rates in the last 100 years. The global literacy rate in the adult population has risen from 31 to 86%. The advances in medical technology have been phenomenal. We fight diseases more successfully than ever before, and we manage to prolong people's life expectancy dramatically. The average life expectancy 100 years ago was only 34 years. Today, it's 72 years. Never before have we seen such drastic changes purely contributed to technology alone. Now, let's go back again. 2,000 years ago, the Romans used pigeons, fire beacons and torches to communicate long-distance messages. 200 years ago, Samuel Morse sent the first message from an electrical telegraph. It was the first time that humans made communication almost instantaneous. Today, we have more than 2,000 communication satellites orbiting the Earth providing communication links and allowing people to be connected in the most remote places of the planet. We are more connected than ever before. 5.2 billion people are using mobile phones. 4.6 billion people are using the internet on a regular basis. And more than half of the world today uses social media nine new social media profiles are created every second. We have seen exponential growth in information sharing due to the advances of technology in media. Radio, TV, printed media have traditionally occupied and monopolized the creation and distribution of information content. But since the birth of the internet, access to information has become instant and available to everyone. And although technology advances at astonishing rates, we seem to struggle to keep up with updating regulations and modernizing our democratic systems to coexist harmoniously with today's society and today's needs and requirements. 
Uh, unfortunately, without proper rules and regulations, the, the mass volume and speed at which information is distributed nowadays provide the ideal conditions for uh, creating and spreading misinformation and disinformation or otherwise known as fake news. The spread of fake news creates an, inf an information disorder that is difficult to monitor and erodes trust in media outlets, authorities, governments and of course our democratic systems. We seem to struggle to agree on the most crucial thing of all. We struggle to agree on what is truth, what is fact, what is democracy. Is our democracy under threat? I believe it is. Our democracy can be under threat. Can our democratic systems be modernized? Absolutely. We can modernize our democratic systems to reflect our way of life. We have been experiencing gradual failing of our democratic institutions for a long time. They have not been improved or updated for centuries and they're failing us. We need to reform our democratic systems to serve our societal needs. We need to make our democracy and political systems work more efficiently than ever before. The technological advances we're experiencing are exciting and offer us benefits that we've never seen before in human history. We live in an age where we can communicate, learn, share, experience, work, live and play, utilizing all our technology. And that's why we need to leverage those tools to modernize our democracy. Instead, we allow opportunists to take charge and exploit those digital tools to create chaos, distraction, and conflict. Unfortunately, we have seen unprecedented levels in the creation and dissemination of information. Everyone can create and share content. We have seen citizen journalism exercised by billions of people. This social experiment driven by tech companies to pursue innovation and increase profit evolved to a powerful medium. These platforms provide easy access to 4 billion people in real time. The impact of social media on people's behavior has been life-changing. However, it is becoming increasingly difficult to detect the veracity and accuracy of all this content. We don't know what is true, we don't know what is false, misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation. They're difficult to detect and, and correct. One in three Europeans encounter misinformation every day. One in two Americans encounter misinformation every single day. We have seen evidence that there was a deliberate spread of misinformation on social media platforms such as Twitter and Facebook in the 2016 US presidential elections and the Brexit referendum. We have seen a genocide that was incited using social media in Myanmar. We have seen revolutions begun in Egypt and Tunisia using social media. We have seen a massive growth of misinformation in the last 15 months due to the pandemic crisis. We have seen fake news about the virus, fake videos, fake pictures, fake cures, fake treatments, supremacist ideas and advanced theories. But we have also seen examples of good practice. We've seen examples of best practices with the modernization and digitalization of democratic systems in Taiwan, Spain, South Korea and Iceland. They've been able to reshape their democratic systems utilizing the best of digital technology. They listen to their citizens, their societal trends, and they are actively reforming their democratic decision-making by incorporating digital tools to enhance civic engagement and participation. They use blockchain technology for voting and digital platforms aimed at harnessing collective intelligence. We have seen the benefits of digital democracy of the citizens, by the citizens and for the citizens. In many countries around the world, we have been experiencing bipartisan politics. We've been feeding a two-party and ultra-divisive political system. In today's world of 7.7 billion people with 
4.6 billion of them using the internet and being interconnected like never before in human history. Being locked in a binary system does not make any sense. Being trapped between one of two choices does not make any sense. What happened to plurality? What happened to the diversity of opinions? What happened to crowdsourcing ideas and solutions? We need plurality. We need participatory democracy. We need people to be involved in regional and national politics, to vote, to decide for the future. We need people to channel their energy and passion in digital democracy, one that will allow everyone to be involved and everyone to have a voice. Instead of using digital technology against our democracy, we need to use technology to strengthen our democracy. And today, despite our technological breakthroughs and our accumulated wisdom over millennia, we have a vacuum. We have disengagement, apathy and misdirection of priorities. That creates opportunities for those that wish to exploit it. And they have. Our contemporary democracies are suffering with either too little participation in real life or too much participation in the virtual world of social media, they're suffering. What we've seen so far is the extreme right and the extreme left competing with each other with disinformation campaigns, with lies, spreading fear and chaos. We have seen religious, financial and political organizations harvesting the popularity of social media for their benefit. We have seen the rise of populism, racism, woke movements, we have seen the rise of opportunistic behaviors with no plan, no strategy and no vision. Unfortunately, we've also seen groups with malicious predisposition ex executing elaborate plans and strategies with a complete disregard for the disastrous consequences. We have seen the tech giants with their social media platforms allowing for this to happen because they refuse to regulate themselves, because they are complicit in what is going on and ultimately becoming enablers and facilitators of undemocratic practices. Their priorities are different, of course. The business model is all about making money from advertising, making profit, no matter what the consequences, as long as the shareholders are happy. The more traffic, the more engagement, the more potential buyers. And what drives traffic and engagement most? Lies. Lies and fake news. A tweet based on lies travels up to 10 times faster than a tweet based on, on facts and truth. You see, truth is boring, fake news is not. We are at the most crucial point in human history with a planet that is heavily populated but insanely interconnected, allowing elite political and corporate monopolies and religious groups with extreme ideologies taking charge and driving us all to a dysfunctional, undemocratic world. We, the citizens of the world, the voice of reason, the citizens that care about our children, our planet, our nature, our wildlife, our future, not the religious extremists, not the shareholders, not the corporate lobbies, not the bipartisan politics. We, the citizens of the world, need to take charge. We need to reform, we need to reshape, we need to modernize our democracy. And we have seen examples of good practice. 6,000 out of 30,000 citizens would physically gather together frequently to talk share their ideas, debate, vote, and decide for their future. They were doing this 2,500 years ago, with no mobile phones, no internet, no social media. We've seen modern examples of good practice. Taiwan has elevated digital democracy to a whole new level. They have incorporated all that wonderful technology to increase citizen engagement and crowdsource ideas and solutions. South Korea has also done it. Iceland has also done it. They are doing it now and it works. We know it can be done with 
careful consideration and moderation, not too little or too much. We must create a modern democracy of the citizens, by the citizens, for the citizens. We have thousands of years of learned experiences. We have the desire, we have the integrity, we have the technology, and we have the tools to create a better world for everyone. Thank you.